So Panzer J back with turn number 10 for Germany, 10.1 officially in Operation Live and Let Die, January 1941. Um, if you guys have been following along on uh, Global War Enthusiast 36 and uh, Fighting Irish's channels, um, you'll know how the war is progressing and most significantly that Fighting Irish got his uh, needed role and was able to bring the U.S. into the conflict there on turn number nine. So um, good for him, good for the Allies, bad news for the Axis. Um, I hope that he can send some of his good luck with his roles uh, my way because the Axis could surely use it. Um, he has been rolling lights out for the Allies, um, both for his tech, but even more so for his wartime uh, roles. It's just been off the charts. Um, he needed a nine or higher um, to bring the British in a few turns ago and got an 11. And then he's rolled five D12s for the U.S., one each for the three turns starting in July 39. And then two extra rolls because of uh, the Japanese attacking uh, the Dutch. So five rolls, he could have got a maximum of 60. He rolled 49 out of 60 with those five rolls. That is insane hot. Um, that's just crazy. If you take what the average should have been around 30, let's say. So that's 19 over the average, which basically comes out to about th between three to four turns early, um, the U.S. is getting into it, just based on those roles. Now, obviously, there's other actions that nations could have taken to give the U.S. more income, so they might not have had to wait three or four more turns. But just basically, um, based on die averages, he would have it would have taken him another three to four turns before he would have been, um, if he would have hit average. That, that's just crazy. So he definitely should be sending some... Uh, some of that good luck rolling on the Axis way because um, we have been on the short end of the stick for most of this game. Um, and definitely with the U.S. coming in um, earlier than I thought and wanted, definitely has changed uh, the complexion of the game and had to rethink a couple of things. But on to uh, Germany and their tech rolls. So we're going to go for the three techs that we have at stage number three which is advanced mechs, long-range aircraft, and wartime economy. And that requires a 7 or higher. So let's go ahead and roll for those. First, uh, advanced mechs, and we got a 2, so nothing there. Then long-range aircraft, we got a 5, <laughs> nothing there. Wartime economy, wow, nothing there. Um, we'll go for improved factory, seven or higher. We got a nine, so that'll do it. And then we'll go for improved construction, seven or higher, and a two. So one out of five. So <laughs> the uh, absolutely horrendous rolls. I just, <laughs> I sometimes you're uh, um, stuck with rolling absolutely horribly and it really affects the game so uh, par for the course okay so now on to uh german spending they have 55 dollars to spend they're going to go ahead and spend 51 so they get a free infantry from spain an air transport for eight a paratrooper for three that's 11 Three fighters, which they're going to be put with um, an existing fighter sculpt. So I just got three chips. That's 30. So that's 41. $7 for a naval transport, 48. And three for an infantry, 51. So they're going to go ahead and save $4 this turn. Okay. Um, for combat, they do have several uh, combat moves. So over here in the east, we are going to send... Um, these three cavalry from East Prussia and one of these infantry from this Polish territory into Lithuania. And then we're going to send this stack of, I believe it's four infantry or maybe five, I'll count them out in a second, and another artillery into Latvia. <clears throat> in uh, Southern Europe, we're going to send two infantry and a cavalry into Yugoslavia. 
Um, these three cavalry and these two infantry from Austria can make it. These three infantry from Bavaria can make it because they're not slowed down going through mountains. And a fighter from Berlin, one, two, three, can reach it. So altogether, that's going to be seven cavalry, four infantry, and one fighter. Okay, so those are the three combat moves in Europe. And then in the Atlantic, we're going to convoy here. We're going to convoy here. And then this sub is going to move down one, two, and convoy down there. So we'll have three convoy rating as well. So let's go ahead and do the convoy first. So we'll go ahead right here. A maximum of $5 can be taken off the British. And I finally, it only took me until turn 10 of the game, got two different colored uh, uh, six-sided die. So we've got a black and a red. So we're going to say the black is Germany and the red is the British, the Allies. So black for Germany, uh, red for the British. So a six to a four. Um, for Germany, so that's plus two, plus uh, another plus two for the sub. So that's $4 the British lose off of that uh, convoy rating. Then down here, they can lose a maximum of six. So again, Germany is the black die, and that's even five to three in favor of the British, two for the Germans, bring it up to five. It's a wash, so nothing there. And then this sub goes one two and is convoying down here in C zone 108 so they can take a maximum of three off the British again the black is Germany one to two plus the, the plus two for German modifier so three to two so they take a buck so altogether the British lost five dollars four if off a of one in one C zone and a dollar uh, in the other so that's it for the uh Convoy rating. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the ground combat. So we are going to go ahead into Latvia. So we've got three cavalry and they all attack at a three and one artillery, which attacks at a three. Okay. Against a single infantry of a four. I'm just, I'm not going to bother putting them on the battle board over here is, is fine. So first, the artillery gets a first strike at a three or less and gets an eight. So we did not succeed there. Let me grab a couple more die. So then we've got three cavalry at threes. And we got a one, a three, and a 12. So that'll hit. And then the infantry in return at a four or less gets a 10. So he's dead with no uh, casualties suffered. I'll go ahead and take the German roundels out and put them down after. So that's a buck up for Germany for uh, Lithuania. Then we're going into Latvia. It's not worth anything, but we're going in there. And we've got a total of two, four, five infantry and one artillery. Okay. So the artillery would be a three. And that's going to pair up with the one of the infantry to make it a three. But let's do the first strike with the artillery first. A nine doesn't hit. Then we've got one infantry at a three. And he got a three, so he hits. The infantry at a four in return. Uh, we'll say that's a two. It's cocked, but we'll go with a two. So one casualty suffered for Germany. And they take... Uh, Latvia as well. And then the last combat is going to be in Yugoslavia. So I think I am going to put these on the battle board because there's more units involved. So let's go ahead and get the Yugoslavs first. Okay, I'll take those guys over here. So we've got two cavalry defending at twos. And then four infantry defending at fours. And then for the Germans, we've got some infantry coming down from Austria. A couple coming over from Hungary. A fighter coming from Berlin. 
So let's put those on the battle board. So the fighter is a six. The infantry, since we're attacking into mountains, is mu minus one. So they would normally be twos. They're going to be ones. And then finally, we've got our cavalry, which... I'll grab all these guys. So... So I want to check out something real quick before um, I go ahead and roll for this battle real quick. Just something I wanted to double check with the mountain terrain. Okay. So, okay, all attacking land units. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was, if it specified infantry class land units because... Cavalry is considered vehicle class, but it does it's all land units. So minus one to the attack. So all those cavalry will normally attack at three. They're going to be twos. So we've got two, four, five, seven twos for the um, cavalry. So let's go ahead and grab a tray here. Okay, so put this over here. So we've got the fighter first, which is attacking at a six. And we get an 11, so of course that doesn't hit. Okay, then we've got the seven uh, cavalry, so three, six, seven. So we got seven twos. <laughs> no hits. And then we got four uh, ones. And we got one hit. So they'll lose a cavalry. So then we've got the two Yugoslavian cavalries at two. And they get 212, so they don't hit. And then we got four infantry at four. And we get two hits. So the Germans will go ahead and take two infantry off. The Yugoslavs lost a cavalry. Okay. So now we are on to the German fighter again. An eight. Miss again. This must be the, if you guys remember, this must be the German fighter that took uh, part in the battle for Warsaw because he missed every time. And this guy is missing every time as well. So, so two, four, we get seven rolls at a two for the cavalry. And we get two hits. We got a one and a two. So they will lose their other cavalry and one infantry. And then we get two rolls at a one for our two remaining infantry. And a seven and a nine, so no hits. Okay, their cavalry at a two misses with a five. And then they get their four infantry at fours. And they got 11, 10, and two sevens, so no hits there. Okay, so let's take... These two units off. They're down to three infantry. Okay, our third roll with our fighter. Oh, shocking. He got a hit. So one infantry down. Then we've got our seven cavalry at twos. And we got a one, a three, a four, a couple of other higher numbers. So just one hit there. So they're down to one infantry. And we get two ones with our infantry. And no hits. Okay. Okay. So they get three fours left. They got a couple eights and a nine, so that won't hit. They are down to just a single infantry. We got our fighter at a six. Oh, he hit. There you go. He redeemed himself. Okay, their one infantry at a four misses with an 11. So Yugoslavia falls. And Germany's going to have two infantry and seven uh, cavalry left. I'm just going to bring the fighter back for now because it has to non-com uh, uh, fly back to uh, German territory. I'll put the other surviving units on after the video. So that's up another $3 for Germany from Yugoslavia. So $4 total Germany went up this turn. So they go from 47 to 51. Okay, and that's it for uh, combat. So now we've got non-combat moves. Okay, so there's a bunch of these to do. So first, um, 
this infantry in East Poland is going to move up one space to the Polish territory that starts with an L that I cannot pronounce. Okay. Then our five medium armor in East Germany are going to go one, two to um, Warsaw. So that will be a total of nine medium armor in Warsaw. And I'll have to chip out one of these guys uh, when I get a chance. Okay. So that's nine medium ar armor in Warsaw. Then the three fighters and the one tactical that were in Warsaw are going to fly one, two, three to West Germany. So I'm going to set these off to the side because I got to move, move a few more things first. But three fighters and one tactical move to West Germany. Then I'm going to strategically rail this self-propelled artillery to Paris. So that is now a fifth self-propelled artillery in Paris. Two infantry from West Germany are going to be strategically railed to Picardy. Okay, so two guys are in Picardy, and those that's three of my strategic rail movements. Then two more infantry from West Germany are just going to move up one space to uh, Belgium. Then the three paratroopers in Berlin are going to move up one space to uh, West Germany. And again, I'm just going to set them off to the side now until I can put everything on there. And the three air transports from Berlin are going to go to West Germany. Okay, and then the three light armor in West Germany are going to move back one space to uh, Berlin. The uh, fighter, and I believe that's it for non-combat. Let me just check real quick. Yeah, that's going to be it for non-combat. So then the one fighter that took that part in Yugoslavia Flew from Berlin, one, two, three, can move one more space. That will fly back to um, Austria. So that's where that fighter is. Okay. So now on to uh, unit placement. And we are going to go ahead and place, grab up our two infantry first. So one infantry has to go in Berlin because that's what we got from Spain. And then one infantry I'm going to put in Paris. Okay. And then we have um, our air transport, our paratrooper, three fighters, and a naval transport. So the naval transport is going to go down in C-zone number 15. The three fighters are going to go in West Germany, and so is the paratrooper and the air transport, all in West Germany. So just to give a little recap of what's where, um, I'm just going to hit Berlin, Paris, Warsaw, and West Germany. Everything else is, is pretty uh, standard, is, was pretty easy. So in Paris, you're going to have seven medium armor, an infantry, and five self-propelled artillery. In Berlin, you're going to have a anti-aircraft gun, two infantry, and three light armor. And in Warsaw, you're going to have nine medium armor. And then in West Germany, you're going to have three infantry, one artillery, four paratroopers, four air transport, one tactical, and six fighters. And that should be it for the Germans. Um, this turn, they collect uh, $51. The only bonus I believe they have is Sweden for three bucks. So that's 54. And they saved $4 last turn. So Germany will have uh, $58 to spend on turn number 11. That finishes off the Germans. Turn things over to Global War 36 enthusiast, and uh, we'll see you guys back on Japan 10.3.